This is the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of May 23rd, 2022. And if you are a subscriber to the Solid Signal Podcast, you're probably noticing this one's dropping a day early. Well, you know, we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend, so I'm just adjusting the schedule a little bit. Next week's podcast is probably going to drop a day early, too, because I will be off on Monday celebrating Memorial Day. I hope you will, too. And for those folks who are not, who are working on Memorial Day, let me just say a real shout out to you because it's one of those things that uh, people just don't appreciate, and I, I want you to know that I do. At any rate, the subject for this week's podcast is what to do if you have a small place to put a TV. I'm talking, for example, to our friends in the RV and, com- and marine community who might be, for example, re- replacing an older tube television that kind of fit into an enclosure and are trying to figure out exactly what to do. I mean, look, obviously, the flat TVs are a lot easier to place than the old tube TVs, but still, they kind of have to fit somewhere. Uh, to some degree, you can ignore the size of the hole that was used to fit that old TV. You can fit an arm into it and have that TV project outward so it could be a little bit bigger. But you probably don't want a 55-inch television inside your RV or in the cabin of your boat. I mean, it's just kind of not just a little bit of overkill, but, you know, hey, uh, even if they're small and flat, there's you know, they're going to take up a certain amount of space, and that gets to be a bit obnoxious. So you're probably on the lookout for a TV on what we would call the smaller size today. Um, Remember, if you look back 20, 30 years ago, that a big TV was a 27-inch to 32-inch and a small TV was like a 13-inch. Well, today, obviously, uh, one of the smallest TVs you can get these days is a 40. And uh, you can get a 32. It's not impossible to find, but they're a little bit harder. And even the 32-inch television is going to seem pretty big inside an RV or in the cabin of a boat. So what to do? It becomes very, very hard to find a smaller TV to fit into those spaces. You end up looking on, you know, weird places and sometimes you run into brands you don't know or like or the costs are way out of control. And so I have a bit of a suggestion for you, although you have to be careful. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a heads up on what you can and can't do and what you should look out for. Most folks don't really think about it, but the truth is that that computer monitor on your desk is really just the same technology as a television. It just doesn't have a tuner uh, and or a remote control, but realistically, it's exactly the same thing. It's the same panel. It, a lot of times, it's the same picture quality. And so you can use a computer monitor in place of a television if you want to, as long as you're not using an over-the-air antenna or if you're willing to use a converter box to make sure that you're getting that over-the-air antenna signal. The issue that you have to watch out for is sound. Uh, Pretty much every computer monitor is going to have a a picture, obviously, but most of them are not going to have speakers attached. So you're going to have to figure out some way of doing that. It's not impossible, however. Make sure that whatever monitor that you buy has a headphone jack out. Headphone jack out is going to allow you to connect pretty much any kind of computer speaker to it. And then again, you've got the sound that you want. Um, Make sure if you're looking for computer speakers that either the monitor itself or the speakers have some sort of volume control. Remember, what you're trying to do is make sure you're not blasting the same volume all the time. Um, You're going to have some issue with the idea of being able to turn it on and off with remote control, but computer monitors are designed to uh, turn off when they're getting no signal and turn on when they're getting signal. So you don't really have to worry about it the same way that you would worry about a television. It's the sound that's the important thing, making sure, like I said, that there's a headphone jack and that either the monitor itself lets you control the volume or that the speakers that you attach have a volume control to them. In this way, you can get relatively small screens to fit in pretty much any space, and every monitor is going to have the option to be uh, mounted on its own stand or to go on some sort of traditional visa mount, in other words, a standard mount so that you can have the mount coming from the wall and it just kind of sticks out, gives you a lot of options there. And that means that you're going to have the opportunity to watch television and have an appropriately sized screen for your area. It works very well if you pay attention to what you need to pay attention to. Unfortunately, 
you will, in order to make this work, want to be using a modern satellite receiver. If you are still using a standard definition receiver out there, you're going to want to trade it in. Um, you've probably thought about this many times in the past, but you're going to need to trade it in in order to use that monitor because the monitors only have an HDMI connection. I'm sure that you're going to have um, kind of a low tolerance for the idea of attaching even more black boxes to this thing to make it work. And so what you're going to do is going to trade up to that high definition receiver. Even if you don't have a high definition dome on your RV or on your boat, because you want that HDMI connection. The HDMI connection is only going to happen in a high definition receiver. You're not going to find them in the old standard definition receivers. And so you want to make sure that you've got that in order to get everything you need. You want this to be the simplest, best opportunity for you, even though you're kind of, you know, making sure that it's the best it can be. You're, you're kind of putting stuff together in a way that was never really intended, but um, you can take steps to make sure that it is as simple as possible. So that's really kind of my big tip for the week. And I just want to stick in a plug for the folks at Signal Connect, the uh, marine and RV activation arm of Solid Signal, uh, because they do more of these mobile activations for satellite than anybody else. And they're the ones who are coming up with these kind of cool tips to help people make sure that they're getting the most out of their RV, out of their boat. Not just satellite television, but satellite internet, cellular-based internet, cell phones, cell boosters, over-the-air antennas, that whole thing. If you've got an RV or a boat and you're not familiar with Signal Connect, you really should be. Chances are the person who put the system in for you is familiar because we handle activations for a lot, a lot of satellite installers. We make it easy for them and we will make it easy for you. Give the folks at Signal Connect a call at 888-233-7563. That's 888-233-7563, and they will take care of you. That's about it for the podcast this week. Like I said, we're adjusting the schedule a little bit, uh, wrapping around Memorial Day. We will be back next week uh, with um, probably a little bit earlier podcast. And for all of you who are off this week in anticipation of Memorial Day, have a great one and come back to work soon. We miss you and we'll see you again next week on the Solid Signal Podcast.